Hi, in this lesson we're going to talk through the steps needed to formally investigate the force of gravity through the simulation. Now that you've had some time to create your solar system and informally explore the simulation, we're going to use it to scientifically test a variety of properties and see what in fact affects the force of gravity between two objects. Notice I specifically said scientifically test the properties. Let's look at an example and see what we mean by this. Let's take a look again at this spring simulation. We want to know what properties affect how long the spring will stretch when I hang a weight on it. I've set the spring strength to one third and gravity to mimic Earth's gravity. Let's add a 50 gram weight to the spring and now measure how far the spring stretches. Looks like it's sitting just beyond the 56 mark which is eight marks beneath where it started. Now let's double the mass of the weight and make the spring strength a little bit stronger as shown by the arrows. And if we measure the spring strength again, indeed it appears the spring has stretched to the 60 mark, which is four further than it was before. So we can confidently say that adding mass and making the spring stronger causes a bigger stretch. Or can we? The problem is, we don't know if it was the increased mass or the increased spring strength, or both, that caused the longer stretch. To scientifically test a property of spring stretch, we need to only change one variable and leave the rest the same. Let's go back to our 50 grand situation. At 50 grams and spring strength of one third, the spring is at the 56 mark. Let's now change only the amount of mass, increasing it again to 100 grams. Aha! Now we can confidently conclude that by adding more mass to the weight, the spring stretch increases. No other variables changed, so the increase in stretch, which is at 64, can only be attributed to the increase in mass. Returning back to our 50 gram mass, now we're going to leave the mass the same and only increase the spring strength. If we look closely, the spring actually decreased in stretch. It started at 56 and now it's at 54. In the absence of any other changes, we can conclude that an increase in spring strength will actually decrease the stretch. We didn't notice this before because the effect of the larger mass overpowered it in our first attempt. Now back to your gravity simulation. We're going to simplify the scenario and place two planets next to each other. Your goal over the next few exercises is to test a variety of properties to determine which has an effect on the strength of the gravitational pull on a planet. In the spring simulation, we had a ruler to help us quantitatively measure the stretch of the spring. This provided hard data that we could use in our conclusions. For your gravity simulation, we're going to use a new function called the print data function. It takes two arguments. The first one tells the program which data you would like printed. In this case, you are printing the force, designated by the capital F, exerted on the planet, object stored in the planet1 variable. There are other data you could print too, but since we're interested in the gravitational force, we'll stick to F at the moment. The second argument, in this case, the 20, determines how frequently the program will print the data. The lower the number, the more data will be printed. You can adjust this value depending on the simulation and how much data you would like to see. You're going to write this function inside the definition of our animate function, which is what causes everything to run in your program. You don't need to worry about the details here, but essentially two things are going on. The simulation starts running with the run simulation function. Data prints with the print data function. You'll see this in the beginning of your exercises, and you just need to include the second function when you want data printed. One point of clarification that's important as you observe your simulation and data. Force, which is what we're interested in learning about, is simply a push or pull on an object. But depending on how much mass an object has, 
that same force will cause a different acceleration, which is how fast the object gains or loses speed. For example, imagine we have two balls that experience the same force. The bottom one has 10 times the mass as the top one. As you can see in the animations on the right, the top ball gains speed much faster than the bottom one since it has less mass. This is important for your work because if you were to guess the force just by looking at the animations, you would say that the top ball experiences the larger force. But by printing the force data, you'll see that in fact both experience a force of 250. It's important to observe your planet's motions, but be careful and use the force data to support your conclusions. Now it's your turn to use your simulation to test the strength of the gravitational forces.